and, and our job, we don't want to be noticed. If, if nobody notices anything, you know, if the gra grass looks good, great. Um, but if there's a bad hop or a player slips or the pitchers are slipping or anything like that, um, if you notice the grounds crew, that's usually a bad sign. So we, we want to be the guys in the background and just have the, the field consistent so that the players know what they're getting and they can perform as well as they can and they don't have to worry about the field affecting it. I, I keep, we keep an open dialogue and I'll ask the players, you know, is everything still good? Is there anything you want done differently? You notice anything um, that we can fix for you? And, you know, if we can give them a little home field advantage, then we'll do that. The grass can be as green as it, you know, you're gonna be glowing, but if the dirt is unplayable, you can't play the game. They always say it's like a cork board. It's like, you know, you throw a dart and it just sticks. We need it to be soft enough that the cleats will go in, but firm enough that, you know, they can twist and make a move, but the clay stays there. This happened 20 years ago. They started building fields with sand base. So you can get an inch of rain, but as long as the tarp's on, you can pull the tarp and be able to play because it's sand base, the water drains right through and there's you know, all kinds of drainage tiles and stuff underneath so that the grass can take all that water and you can still be able to play. Especially in the summer here, we could get you know, three quarters of an inch of rain the day before a homestand and still be fine the next day. Because the, the way the dirt takes the water, it's designed to take the water and maintain its stability. So we can play through rain and get more games in without having to stop them. When the team's gone, you know, we're doing seating, we're aerating, we're edging. You know, if the mound or plate bullpens need touched up or the slopes are getting off, we have to get those back. Uh, if the warning track needs work, we're fertilizing, we're spraying. All that stuff that we can't do when the team's in town, we do when they're out of town. We fertilize differently than a home lawn, so our grass is growing at a different rate than you know a home lawn is. So, and that's by design, so the grass can take more wear and be able to recover and you know stay as healthy as it can. So, you know, if we get two days without mowing, we'd be bailing hay out there. For me, patterns take a lot of time to put in, and we just don't have time to do that kind of stuff. You know, we, um, and the other thing. When you start bending the grass over, that's how you get those crazy patterns in, is you're bending the grass over in different ways. And when you do that, when the ball is rolling on it, it's gonna, the ball is gonna roll differently. So, you know, they're 14, 15 hour day for a 6.30 game, 14, 15 hour days, eight days in a row. You know, that's the, it's kind of the way it is. And we, we don't have a week of games and then a week off to fix everything. You know, we're, we're in the middle, I think we have 40 games in 45 days right now. So you just have to be as perfect as you can and do the extra little stuff all the time. Because, you know, if you just throw in the towel and say, what are you going to do? It's going to be way worse than if you try as hard as you can to make it perfect.